All right, Hillary, here we go. We are recording. You ready? Yeah. All right. So five, four, three, two, and one. All right, folks, welcome back to the Trauma Therapist Podcast. I am very excited to have back Hillary Jacobs Hendel. Hillary, welcome. Thank you, Guy. Thanks for having me back. All right. So Hillary received her BA in biochemistry from Wesley University, a DDS from Columbia, and an MSW from Fordham University. She's a certified psychoanalyst, an AEDP psychotherapist, and supervisor. She's also co-developed of, she was one of the co-developers of the Emotions Education 101 Turnkey Curriculum, as well as Emotions Education 101 eight-week class on Zoom. She's passionate about taking the complex world of emotions and making them easy to understand and work with for greater peace, calm, and confidence. She's also the developer of the Change Triangle Tool for Emotional Health. So, wow, busy much? <laughs> <laughs> The book, which is the whole enchilada. Well, we're going to talk about the book here, <laughs> which is called um, uh, the award-winning book, actually, self-help book on emotions called It's Not Always Depression, Working with the Change Triangle to Listen to the Body, to Discover Core Emotions and Connect to Your Authentic Self. It's published by Random House. Um, in addition, she also published articles in New York Times, Time Magazine, Oprah Salon, among others. Wow. All right. So... First of all, welcome back. Thank Share you. with our listeners before we get going here where you're from originally and where you are currently. Absolutely. I am born and raised in New York City in Manhattan, uh, embarrassingly on the Upper East Side. And then I had a short stint in Memphis, Tennessee for six years, then ended up back on the Upper West Side. Wow. And then I married a guy um, almost tw- in the second marriage 20 years ago that was based in Connecticut and he had a, a cute little house on coastal Connecticut. So that's where I am right now. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So let's jump in here. Um, you know, before we started recording, you said there, there are kind of other things that on the agenda that you want to talk about. What are those things? Well, since we last spoke, I, th- I think we spoke around the time the book was published and uh, that the, so y- you may remember, or people that have uh, know me that I became passionate about spreading emotion education to the public after I learned about emotions in my training, that I had stumbled upon this whole body of work that was really the trauma therapies, AEDP and EMDR and somatic experiencing. And before that, I had never learned about emotions in the body, Hmm. which was so conspicuous to me because I really had the best medical and psychological education that money can buy. And so I hadn't learned that in my formal mm. education. When I learned about emotions and working in my body, not staying up in my head, which is where I lived, it really transformed my mental health. I started writing for the public because my pet peeve that nobody's getting emotion education really mm-hmm. turned into a moral outrage, as I like to say, and I began writing. And so then I had this lucky experience where uh, an agent read this article in the Times that I wrote and I got asked to write a book. What did I want to write on? And it was this, this triangle, which was just, it's a basic upside down triangle, but it was a tool mm-hmm. that I found I'd never, and to this day have not found a useful tool to understand myself and others. And it's universal. Every human being falls on this triangle of um, understanding the way we block emotions with defenses and anxiety and inhibition and what the core emotions are that we're supposed to be paying attention to and Mm -hmm. all the good things that happen. So that's all been the same since we've spoken. And meanwhile, the book continues to sell all over the world. It sold about a hundred thousand copies, which I'm so excited and so proud of. And um, what I did in the meantime is I developed a curriculum because if you're going to be, the book teaches emotions, but it's really, can we, you know, ideally, I, I think emotions in the next 50 years, hopefully way before then, will be taught as basic education in high school, along with reading and, and writing, because it's- so Why funny. do you think they're not? I think we live in an, in an emotion-phobic, completely dysfunctional society, <laughs> and uh, people are frightened by emotions because the actions that emotions cause are destructive often. And so it's a catch 22. We need to understand and work with emotions to 
to re to, to shift them from destructive actions like what causes trauma, child abuse and child neglect and everything else to construct and to constructive, not only to prevent and uh, to prevent trauma, but to, for people to understand from the get go what causes trauma and how you heal it. So I feel like the emotion education that I'm providing is the bedrock, the fundamental beginning of healing and recovery and prevention. I know that to be true. Okay, let's get into that. Before we do, you know, you said, or even I read in your bio that you had a BA in biochem from Wesleyan, uh, DDS from Columbia, Jesus. <laughs> and there was like no emotions in there. It was wasn't until you started the other trainings that you learned about them. What was it about emotions that you were like, oh my gosh, this is, yeah. Yeah, yeah it wasn't even in psychoanalysis. <clears throat> of course, when you're doing psychoanalytic therapy, CBT and all these kind of more the mainstream, you, what I, and being, having been an, a patient for many years in psychoanalysis um, and in various types of therapy, you hope to sort of stumble on an emotion and have it come up and out and feel a catharsis or feel some relief. Uh, and that was the extent of really what, there was no formal education in emotion. So what that looked like was literally understanding what is an emotion, uh, understanding that emotions weren't, aren't heady things, they're body-based. And so the sort of the first epiphany was one that you can't control emotions because I was raised to think that if I just was strong enough mm -hmm. and tough enough, that no matter what I did, no matter what happened to me, I should be able, able to prevail and be okay. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, that's a myth that I should be able to overcome my emotions. So with emotions, once you learn about how the brain works, they get triggered without conscious control because they get triggered. It's really interesting because it's now, I never understood like the whole idea about the five senses, hearing and seeing. And, but what I, what's interesting is the five senses are how we are unconsciously perceiving the environment. And those, uh, our eyes and our ears and our sense of touch really go right into the middle of the brain, mm -hmm. into the limbic and emotional system. And from there, if something has enough sort of power to it to elicit an emotion, it will light up that part of the brain. And when the emotion is triggered, it will then light up the, the, the lower levels of the brain and connect to the vagus nerve and the body because this was the another aha moment. The purpose of emotions is to make our body move in these adaptive ways for survival. That's why we mm. evolved to have emotions over um, thousands of thousands of years. So it's so, only after we have an emotion that we know we're having an emotion. So you can't control it. Therefore, why should we judge ourselves for our emotions, which everybody does all day long every day? Right. Say that again. The purpose of emotions is to make our body move. Yes. Talk more about that. Yes. So, so um, the example that I always use is that, that everyone can relate to is if a wild beast just, just busted into both of our rooms right now, we would be like running. my little daughter, <laughs> <laughs> little daughter that right. the little that, was, uh, right. that uh, we would be running. There would be absolutely no thought about it. The right. the the danger would come in, and our legs and would move, and our, our body would know what to do. It would mm. pump blood to our heart and our lungs and our muscles so that we could escape. Then, once we were safe and we could sort of think about what happened, we would be able to know we were in danger, and the feeling that we're having is fear. And the fear did its job. It made mm -hmm. us run. If we had to think, if you and I had to say, oh my God, something's coming in. I think, you know, we should run guy. It looks like we should run. We'd right. be eaten by then. Right. So it's this idea that emotions are there on purpose to be rapid actions. And each of the core emotions, sadness, anger, fear, disgust, joy, excitement, and sexual excitement, the ones that I named in the change triangle, it's not that they're the only emotions, but they're the ones that I see get us into most trouble mm. uh, in terms of our blocking them. And they're the most easy to understand. They're the basic uh, categorical emotions. Mm -hmm. Each of those emotions has a separate program with a separate action that is meant to be adaptive for surviving and thriving. 
we allow it to inform us. Right. So interesting. If you think that we spend so much time and our society is built upon this idea of right ignoring or suppressing our emotions right when in fact they're really for adaptive purposes and to help help us move in a sense exactly and not only is it not adaptive to block emotions but when we bury emotions well first of all in trauma that's exactly what's being the definition is that our capacity to deal with our emotions has been exceeded mm -hmm. One, because of the intensity of the emotion coming up, and two, because we are left, we're too alone. We are wired as human beings to help each other regulate and soothe. And so when we bury our emotions, whether we do it a little, because we're lucky and we didn't have a lot of emotional mm -hmm. challenges, or we do it a lot because we had so many wounds and traumas, the bearing of emotions itself is what causes these symptoms that we all have now, mm. chronic anxiety, depression. And then from there, many of the disorders in the DSM are really trauma symptoms mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from buried emotions where we have to break up our mind into different parts to, to be able to manage the conflicts of, for example, having a parent that we're wired to go to for safety and having that same parent in an abusive situation mm -hmm. be scary. And so we have this conflict between this impulse to move forward to a parent for care mm -hmm. and another impulse to protect right. ourselves from danger. And how does a little child deal with that conflict? They can't. Right. So the mind has to kind of split apart. Well, wow. just a reminder, I'm speaking with Hillary Jacobs Hendel. Um, the book is called, it's not always depression, working with the change triangle to listen to the body, discover core emotions and connect to your authentic self. And now uh, recently you have a curriculum on this and this can be accessed where at your website. Yeah. So my the Hillary Jacobs .com, I really built to be a hub of emotion education with largely free resources for the public to use and share. Sort of like the idea is like a grassroots movement to, to educate the public uh, in ways that are, and to educate in ways that are practical and relatable and I don't use jargon. Mm -hmm. A lot of therapists read my book and I, I'm sure learn AEDP from the book and um, take my classes, but I, it's really geared so that a maybe a late teen, 15, 16 and up can understand it. The book is a basic emotion education. The title is sort of wonky, like, okay, it's not always depression. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. and what it means is it's being human and life and how life affects us emotionally and what to do with those emotions. And the book and the blog and all the resources on my website are really a lot of stories because we're all human beings are, when it comes to emotions, we're really all the same mm -hmm. um, on the basic level. And we need the same things and we have to process them in, in similar ways. And so it's, it's relatable. So on the website, they, um, there's a free curriculum. That's a, a 12 class curriculum that was uh, developed by a colleague of mine this is kind of an interesting story. Um, Heather Sanford, uh, who's just a lovely, lovely human being, was practicing AEDP up in Ithaca. She read my book when it first come out. Came out. She was working with very traumatized people and and uh, for the state and developed a curriculum uh, that was sort of a step up after they're getting out of psychiatric hospitals and and intensive. And then she contacted me. She the curriculum was based on my book. And she used my resources from the website, the blogs and the videos I make on the Change Triangle YouTube channel. And she said, hey, I've been doing this thing. And I was like, whoa, that's great. Let me take a look. I'd love to see what you're doing because I'm not a teacher. I didn't have teacher training um, uh, in that way. And then she said, you know, I'd like to start teaching a group. I love groups and I'd love to do a group for the public. And do you want to rewrite the curriculum? for a public to start to run these groups. So we wrote a second curriculum together. So I offer a free 12 class curriculum that anybody can take. And, and uh, it's sort of a lighter curriculum. It's okay. the sort of basic, basic education and just reading some stuff and playing around with emotions. And then there's the 
the curriculum that we sell, but it's it's pretty inexpensive for, you know, we really wanted this to be affordable to get mm -hmm. out. And that one is more to teach the, here's the problem with teaching emotions. And this is why I think another reason why we don't see a lot of emotion education out there is you can't think your way through an emotion. Mm -hmm. much as that would be great, right? That's the worst news. If we could think our way through emotions, we'd think about them and solve problems, but we don't. We get ca caught up in the head and then we start to obsess and ruminate. You have to experience an emotion. So to teach emotions, you have to, what, what, we, what we've done with this curriculum is each 90 minute class, and people can rearrange the curriculum and, and do it the way they want to do for their communities and, and make mm -hmm. it different. Of, but basically in each class, we give an, a little experience so they can, they can have, so you, we're guiding together, creating a compassionate, safe, non-judgmental holding environment to say, just notice what's happening in your body when you think of something sad, for example. Mm -hmm. Then I teach for 20 minutes in the curriculum, it's on video, or I give the slides and people can teach it themselves. And then I teach on sadness and what is what is sadness? How do you experience sadness? How do you move through sadness? What happens when you get stuck? All these things. And then at the end of the class, we do another, we break up into a small group and we do another experiential exercise. And then after each exercise, we talk about so people can have the experience of sharing and talking about emotions because there's no place in society where it's right. sanctioned to really talk about emotions. And then you get to hear how different people experience things and it takes the shame out of it all. Mm. And it's, it's just, it's very touching and beautiful. And people really say that in eight classes, they get years wow. of therapy and, and also they get therapy that they never had after being in psychoanalysis for 20 years. That it's just, no, is this for the public and, and, and therapists as well? Yes. Yeah, so the class that, that we, that we, that I teach the next right. class in September that Heather and I teach together is open to everybody 18 and over. Anybody can that's going to that. be a live class. It's a live class. We starting in together. September. Yeah. Okay. Um, from, it meets from Wednesdays from three to four 30. Where's the link for that? Cause I want to put that on my the oh, show notes page. It's on, it's all on my website. There's a tab on my website that says emotions education one Oh one. Yes. That has the class. If the you eight want week to. one. That's the eight week class. It's where okay. you can also buy the curriculum. You get like a Dropbox download with a ton of stuff that you have everything you need to start teaching, or you can just play the videos and we teach it. And you just okay. the person holding the, the group. Got it. Okay. And I'll put the link up there. Also have a, a train the trainer. It's a four hour webinar that teaches therapists and coaches how to deliver the information, how to create space because the class is, you have to go so slow when you're working mm. with emotions to keep anxiety low and because it, you have to go so slow to begin to perceive mm -hmm. what's happening in your body, like a warmth or a mm -hmm. tightness or energy. And we're just getting to know in a gentle, gentle way what's happening and to see how emotions work. And we're working that triangle, moving from disconnected and defended states mm -hmm. through anxiety, guilt, and shame in manageable, non, we don't, we don't talk about our traumas. It's not a trauma processing because we don't want to trigger other people. It's really mm -hmm. the exercises are gentle and just designed to evoke enough emotion to get a mm. feel. So people don't have to be so frightened, right? That's, that's the leap of faith that I remember when I first went to an AEDP training mm -hmm. and we broke up into groups to do experiential exercises. And somebody first asked me when I said I was anxious, if I would if I could notice the anxiety in my body. And I was like, what? If I do that, I might explode or lose control. Right. But I had, a, I trusted the person. I trusted that somebody knew what they were talking about. It turned into my anxiety. Yeah. And it went down and not up. And it was another revelation. Wow. Yeah. That sounds incredible. Hold, hold on here, my daughter. Yes, Gemma. <laughs> a pretty name come here what hurry up i'm right in the middle of an interview want to say hi what say hi no we have 
she wants to say hi with her hand. All right, go say okay. hi. Re reach in front. Let's see the hand. She wants to see your hand. How many fingers are on that hand? How many Three? fingers are on your hand? <laughs> come here, come here. Come here. Just say hi, and then you got to go back because I want to finish. Okay, because then I'm going to take you to the store. Yeah, go ahead. Let me see how beautiful you are. Come on, she wants to see you. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Oh my gosh, she's so shy. Come on, yeah. would you get over here? I'm shy too. Believe it or not. Okay. <laughs> Nobody believes that. I'm a shy introvert. <laughs> oh my God, you are so beautiful. <laughs> oh. All right, do you have what? any questions? No. Okay, why don't you go out? Let me finish. Okay, and then we're going to go. In about 10 minutes. Okay. All right. Good job, Gemma. We shouldn't edit this out. I'll probably keep it in. All right. <laughs> Should yeah. I, um, if you can let me screen share, I can show a picture of this triangle. Oh, okay. Okay. Hold on. She, Gemma wants to say hi to you. Here, okay. Here, come over here. You got to come over here, though. Come over here. Okay. Just come over here. Come over here. All right. You gotta, but you got to get in here. You got to get over here. Okay. Come here. Hurry up. Gemma, you got to come. Okay, look at the camera. Okay, say hi. Do you know we're talking about Gemma? A very weird subject. You want to know? We're talking about feelings and emotions. Why? What do you think about that? <laughs> I don't know. I okay. know. I didn't so, know either. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's the, that's the first time it's ever happened in like seven hundred interviews. Um. She's so beautiful. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so this is sounds really, really awesome to me. And it sounds, I mean, given the fact that a lot of therapists listen to this, why do you think this would be, I mean, I, I think it's, it's a no-brainer, but why do you think, in your words, why this would be useful for therapists? Yeah, I would say several reasons. One, it is fundamental that therapists and clients alike have a basic education in emotions. I mean, it just, it doesn't make any sense to me if, if, do you know what I'm saying? If like, if therapy is about getting to know oneself and creating insight into one and trying to create change there, you have to deal with emotions. Emotions right. are cause us all the troubles. So the, the fundamental education in emotions without it just that's why i thought this was a no-brainer it makes no sense i don't know why i haven't sold a, a million copies mm -hmm. of the book but again emotions is a tough sell yeah and uh so that's one reason the other is that it turbocharges therapy mm. i've heard I, I get letters every day that is the thrill of this um and through social media that it just makes the hugest difference in the world so it turbocharges the therapy it helps both the therapist and the client kind of relax it like de shames which mm -hmm. is shame is another it's a very important emotion we do not therapists do not get hardly any like emotion education on, on core emotions they get too little mm -hmm. on shame which is pervasive in a therapeutic room mm -hmm. and therapists need to learn how to work with it in very specific ways that i illustrate um, in the book that have to do with a lot of Richard Schwartz work on IFS, but this idea of like de how to de-shame really quickly and how to mm -hmm. um, connect. So there's no downside to an emotion education and every every possible upside that I could imagine. Right. And I have to say personally, I became interested in it. Uh, by the time I found AEDP and I switched careers from dentistry, I had two clinical depressions where I went on Prozac for six months, it was stress related. I think uh, one was when I was getting divorced and another was when my ex-husband was getting remarried. And again, mm. they're like dealing with like the stress of aloneness and two young children. And I I didn't know, I didn't, but at that time I didn't really realize, I didn't know at all that depression was caused by underlying emotions. Mm -hmm. Now I do, but at the time I could just try to de-stress a little bit. It, it, it taught me that I can't do everything I want. I really have to, tune into myself. But then since I had the education in emotions, and since I started processing emotions, both in and out of therapy, I haven't had another episode of depression. Mm. And I, I never will because of that. That's 
that's not to say that people that have a lot of genetic tendency toward depression um, will experience it differently, but it certainly has no downside, no matter what diagnosis, to understand how to be with emotions, mm -hmm. to not, to really work hard, to welcome them, to get to know them, to use them as data mm -hmm. and not as a threat, even though they are painful. And the goal mm -hmm. is not to get rid of emotions or stop having them, but when you're not, when you're afraid of something, it's that much more painful. Mm -hmm. So one of the thing, ways that I teach, like emotions or core emotions are wave-like. And so when I, when I help guide someone, when, they're, when I see sadness and I say, you know, can we slow way down and honor this feeling? And can you tell me how you know that there's sadness coming up in your body? When you focus on it, it will start to build. Mm -hmm. and like all pure core emotions, they come up, they crescendo, and then they go down and you feel better. And um, I teach it, I liken it to stubbing your toe that when you, when you first stub it, there's no pain, right? Mm -hmm. And then you know it's coming, it's coming and it's gonna build and you don't know how high it's gonna build. And then you know it's gonna get better. Mm -hmm. And that type of wisdom, if we can take to an emotion without acting on it. And I think that's another point before we get off that I just wanna clarify teaching emotions and validating emotions is not permission to wear emotions on our sleeve or to act out badly or as an excuse for acting out badly. Right. Learning to what an emotion is and to experience it is a completely internal experience. The last step is to bring reason and logic on board and then to be able to think through how am I going to use this emotion for my well-being and for the well-being of my relationships and my life to move forward in the direction that I have thought through and want to do. And so we're talking now about experiencing emotions, not behaving badly. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're learning that when you learn to focus in on, a, on, on the body, you're doing so many things at the same time, besides detoxifying the feeling, you're slowing everything down so that in a triggered moment, let's say with your wife, where she really annoys you and you might ordinarily have gotten into a fight because you mm -hmm. would have gotten defensive or called her something like stupid. In these moments, you can, people develop the ability to pause and know what's happening as it's happening. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go away, but, but you can, okay, I've just been triggered. I'm enraged at my wife. I know that I have to really work hard now to control the impulse that's normal and natural, right? If we feel mm -hmm. attacked, we want to lash out. Anger mm -hmm. is a primitive program. It wants to fight, it wants to be mean, but we are, luckily we're born with rational logic and impulse control that we can pull back, work with that, reframe it, and with a tremendous amount of work, this change triangle is a tool to be used mm -hmm. over the rest of our lives. It's a fundamental basis of how to work with our emotions for the rest of our life and um, it's not a perfect it's a practice like mindfulness like meditation but i would call it mindfulness with a map mm. because instead of going into the spaces between our parts and feelings we can actually work with them to process our wounds and traumas again on our own sometimes with a coach, with a therapist. Wow. I love this. And I love the way you're approaching it. I, I loved, I appreciated you saying that, you know, you move slowly through this. Um, it sounds to me, Hillary, like this is a, a, almost a curriculum in, in being human, you know, which is really amazing to me. Mm -hmm. I, again, um, people can, uh, so you've got this, live workshop coming up when september is when we're going to we're okay. finishing um we have one more class of the eight week class next week okay we it all together but september 7th uh wednesday at, it's every wednesday from 3 to 4 30 p.m uh which for better or for worse is, is when it is okay That's september 7th and then we have a new train the trainer to, for people where it comes with the curriculum and actually until the end of june i don't know when this is going to 
show and but until the end of June we have an early bird special on the oh. the curriculum and the four hour webinar and um, that's going to be in October and then we'll see what happens next year I don't know if I'll still be teaching it in 2023 I may just hand it over to Heather awesome well it sounds amazing um, I'd love to help you promote this you know by by posting it up on on my Facebook page also um, what's the best way for people to reach out to you Hillary as we kind of close out here Oh, I'm very, very accessible. I am everywhere in social media because that's the best way to educate people as much as I am not a fan of social media. And on the on my website, which I hope people will will just poke around and check out, um, on the footer is my email address and my phone number. And but the best way to stay connected is to sign up for my blog once a month. I send out just once I send out a um, uh, an email through MailChimp, and it's got my newest article that I get inspired to write. I just published yesterday something on uh, feeling like a fraud and insecurities with probably way too many tools, but I can't help myself from like just wanting to give a selection because everybody's different. And needs sure, different. sure. And next month, I think I'm going to write about my journey to change careers and leave dentistry because it was one of the biggest traumas my family went berserk. So I like wow. to write about myself a lot because. I know me. <laughs> sure. Hillary, you are a delight to talk to and so inspiring. I mean, I, I love talking to you, what you're sharing here. And uh, it is not obviously just vital for us as humans, but I think it's really, really integral for therapists. Integral. Yeah. Integral. Um, and I'd love to have you back at a later date. We can continue the discussion. Um, or any other discussion, but uh, thank you so much for, for coming on here and, and for dealing with my my little spicy peanut girl. Spicy peanut. <laughs> right. Peanut. <laughs> thank you so much for having me, and I uh, I'm so thrilled that we. All right. Here. Take care. Take care. Bye bye.